In this video, I'm going to show you how to fabricate and assemble the fire carriage. The fire carriage sits in between the headstock and the tailstock. The fire carriage is used to hold Bunsen burners, torches, and other auxiliary tools. I will be using six by quarter inch cold rolled steel cut to five inches long. There are Bunsen burners with magnetic bases that sit nicely on the steel. You can also bolt or weld on T-slot to extend its utility. I like to use layout fluid and a scribe for these projects. It's not totally necessary, but it helps with precision. The little bottle typically comes with an applicator. Just brush it on and let it dry. I set my dial caliper to 1.75 inches. Once it's set, I'll measure in from the edge and scribe a line. Scribe the second line using the same measurement. I next adjust my caliper to 3.25 inches and measure from the same side. Your second score mark will be made 7 sixteenths of an inch in from the edge. I'm using machinist parallels to speed things up for myself, but you may not have these around. You're welcome to use your caliper for this, or any other measuring device you happen to have handy. Once you're satisfied with your marks, center punch all the holes in preparation for drilling. Use an eighth inch drill bit to drill all four pilot holes. The final holes will be drilled using a 7 16 inch drill bit. Once the holes are drilled, clean up both sides with a countersink. The piece of metal we just fabricated will be attached to standard linear motion carriages from CNC router parts. Before we get started with assembly, we're going to need to tap a hole for the fire carriage handle. It doesn't matter too much which hole you tap. If you don't like the position of the handle, you can always come back and tap the other one later. You'll need to use a 3 8 inch tap, 16 threads per inch, also known as a coarse thread. Get your tap started, and then make sure to back it off a turn or a quarter turn every turn or so. With any luck, your hole will be straight and your tap unbroken. After you're done, wipe down the carriage and clean up the hole. Before we mount the top plate, we're going to have to do a little assembly on the carriages. They come with all the hardware. Slide one of the bearings over the included bolt, and then finish it off with a lock washer. Thread this into the side of the carriage that has the pre-installed bearing sticking out. Do this for both sides. Once they're installed, use a wrench or a ratchet to tighten them all the way down. Repeat this step on the other side. The next step is very similar. We'll need to mount the lower set of bearings. The bolts that hold these bearings float a little bit in their oval holes, and we use set screws to push the bolt and bearing up against the ways. You can install the bolt first or the set screw first. It doesn't really matter too much. In this video, I install the set screw first. No need to tighten it all the way down. Just get it set in the hole so it doesn't fall out. 
Later in the process, we'll be applying blue thread lock to the set screws. Do not use the red thread lock. It's a hard set, making it difficult to remove the set screws if needed. The bolt, the bearing, and the lock washer go together the same, but instead of a threaded hole, there's a nut retaining the bolt on the back end. Thread the two together, but leave things loose so the bolt can slide around. Repeat this step with the remaining bolts and bearings, remembering to leave things loose. Now that the carriages are assembled, we can mount the top plate. I use 3 8 inch bolts with a washer and a lock washer. The bolts I use here are about one and a half or one and a quarter, but we need one inch bolts for the tail stock, so it's best to standardize, and I recommend using 3 8 by one inch bolts for this step. Continue to attach using remaining bolts. The fire carriage is now assembled, but everything should be finger tight and still just a little bit loose.